Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad for the Sad Truth. Yesterday I appeared on the Skeptic Fence Show where we discussed a wide range of issues including my scientific work. Uh, and then in the after show, uh, we continued our discussion uh, and at one point the topic of Anita Sarkeesian came up. Now I didn't know who uh, Ms. Sarkeesian was until I think I stumbled on her while watching some uh, clips by Thunderfoot. Uh, I had become a fan of some of his anti-creationism videos and then through watching some of these videos uh, I stumbled on some of his uh, uh, clips where he criticizes Anita. That's how I was first exposed to this uh, lady otherwise I would have never known who she was. And in our conversation in the after show last night uh, I was arguing, I was contrasting uh, you know the full feminist uh, Anita Sarkeesian with a true feminist uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali, right? Ayan Hirsi Ali fights for really serious uh, obstacles and challenges that women face around the world. And of course, she's had to pay a very heavy price. She's had to have security detail for, I think, well over a decade because there are some really nasty folks that would like to harm her. And on the other hand, you've got Anita Sarkeesian who's tackling a rather trivial issue like, quote, patriarchal depictions in video games. Uh, and then she screams, uh, you know, victimhood, uh, because apparently some people are are cyber bullying her. Now, of course, if somebody is truly threatening her, threatening her physically, then that's to be condemned, and that perpetrator should be uh, pursued uh, appropriately. Uh, but again, there is a contrast to be made here between somebody who's doing truly important work, such as Hersey Ali, and uh, somebody who's really uh, not in the case of Anita uh, and the, the the guest with whom I was uh, chatting uh, disagreed with me because he thought that it was an unfair comparison he thought that uh, look uh, sure Ayan Hirsi Ali might be doing important work but that doesn't mean that the stuff that Anita is tackling is not also worthwhile and so then I decided to move the discussion to a more uh, scientific critique of her work and here I was trying to argue that uh, you know, her methodology is profoundly shoddy. Uh, and so let me just point first that the idea of a content analysis, right? So, so doing an analysis of the contents of a product, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, right? So uh, in, in my own work, in my own books, uh, The Consuming Instinct and The Evolutionary Basis of Consumption, I talk about uh, what I call fossils of the human mind. So unlike, say, paleontologists who could go out into the field and collect skeletal uh, remains or fossils to study the evolutionary history of a species, the human mind doesn't fossilize. But what I argue does fossilize are the cultural products that are left behind, right? So we could study song lyrics and movie and television uh, plot lines and literature and art and religious narratives. We could study the contents of these products uh, so that they could tell us something about the human mind, right? And it's precisely... Uh, that fact that allows us to understand an ancient Greek tragedy that was written several millennia ago, we could read it today and fully understand what the author was referring to, right? Because some of these universal themes are, you know, uh, invariant across time and place, right? Sibling rivalry, parent-offspring conflicts, paternity uncertainty, status-seeking, uh, uh, all of these uh, Darwinian uh, issues are things that uh, anyone could relate to, be precisely because they are part of our biological heritage. So the idea of doing content analyses is perfectly valid, scientifically speaking. And as a matter of fact, let me just mention a, a few you know, great studies that have been done using content analysis. And so uh, there's a Darwinian historian who studied uh, how uh, she, she looked at a content analysis of, of the Old Testament to uh, draw a correlation between the status of a male and the number of uh, sexual partners uh, he had. Uh, and so in the Old Testament, as you might imagine, the higher the status of a male protagonist, uh, the, the more women are associated to him, as you would expect from a Darwinian perspective. The way that she conducted that study is by doing an analysis of the contents of the Old Testament. Uh, you could do a content analysis of uh, uh, Harlequin uh, romance titles. 
precisely because you want to try to understand what are the mating preferences that women seek in their idealized version of a man, uh, right? Most romance novels are read by women. And so if you really want to understand women's mating preferences, then look at the way that uh, the male protagonists are depicted in romance novels. That's perfectly fair, very scientific, uh, completely following the scientific uh, methods. Uh, there's, been, there's been another study that looked at uh, a content analysis of porn, right? You could look at the types of sexual depictions that are inherent in porn movies, say, targeting heterosexual men, uh, and that can tell you something about uh, male sexuality. Uh, as I've discussed in a previous Sad Truth clip. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, uh, and I love this particular study because it was so rigorous, uh, some researchers uh, did a content analysis of uh, folk tales stemming, I think, from 48 disparate cultures, 48 cultures, and then looked also at a whole bunch of classic works of uh, Western lit literature because they wanted to study uh, certain mating preferences that might hold true across all of these uh, different folk tales and works of literature. For example, do men and women uh, look for uh, certain mating attributes as depicted in literature? And not surprisingly, there are certain universal mating preferences. And so again, uh, there's nothing wrong with content analysis as long as it is done rigorously and it, as long as it, it adheres to the scientific method. So now coming back to Anita Sarkeesian, she certainly doesn't do that, right? She doesn't have a formal methodology by which she analyzes her video games. Rather, she simply cherry picks, picks and chooses what she wants so that it fits her final victimology narrative, right? If a, a male character is shown shooting a woman, well, of course, this is because of hostile sexism, because of hatred toward women. If a male protagonist is shown uh, rescuing a woman from harm, then, of course, that's benevolent sexism. You're basically arguing that women need to be rescued. They're damsels in distress. Uh, so to be chivalrous and gallant towards women is a form of patriarchal oppression. Uh, and so every possible state of the world leads to an accusation of patriarchal, diabolical oppression. So not only is she, uh, in my view, addressing a rather uh, trivial uh, problem, if, if she is really concerned about tackling women's issues around the world, but the way she goes about it is, in a, is completely shoddy, at least from a scientific perspective. And that's why you don't see her submitting this work to any scientific journals, uh, because it wouldn't pass uh, you know, the quality control that would be required via peer review process. So there you have it, a analysis of the content analysis approach of uh, Ms. Sarkeesian. I think yesterday on the show, I said something like, uh, Anita Sarkeesian is the Reza Aslan of content analysis. So there you go. Uh, have a great week. Hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, clip. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, consider uh, supporting the channel through Patreon. Take care, everybody. Ciao.